Hey guys, what's up? My name is Gabe and this is Games with Gabe and this is the next episode in the 2D game engine series for Java. In this episode we will be working on the properties panel and we will get the bug fixed where when you clicked on this these were behind. We do have Z indexing support, I just did not know about it. So we'll be fixing this and we will be working on this properties panel so that we will get this result that you see. And I'm not gonna lie, I took a lot of inspiration, like mainly all of the code from the Chernos tutorial. So there's a link in the description to the Chernos original C++ tutorial. I had to change a few things to get it to work right using the Java version of I am GUI, but this is what we will be working on. And then we will also be making it so that if you have some other objects with other stuff that all of their properties will be exposed properly and you can sort of open and close these things. So let's get to it. Normally I would do a little drawing tutorial, but I feel like most of this code is straightforward enough that we don't really need a visual explanation. Let me know if you guys need any extra explanation in the comments and I will we'll try and resolve those. Okay, so first thing we're gonna do is fix this bug where basically when we place in a new object, the arrows are behind it. And that's because we have Z indexing, we're just not using it right now. So thank you. I cannot remember who commented, but somebody commented and told me that we do have the indexing support. I was about to go ahead and rebuild it again, but we do have it. We just don't have it working for that. So I am going to do a little bit of refactoring. First, we're going to go into our transform class because really the Z index should be in here. So we're going to go ahead and create a new integer in here, and we're just going to call this Z index, which is pretty straightforward. And we just want to make sure that we go ahead and initialize this up here. We'll just say this dot Z index equals zero whenever we initialize a new transform. And then we also want to make sure that we update our equals method because uh, it is now we didn't update this when we added rotation too, but this should be make sure that the T copy or whatever T dot rotation equals this dot rotation and T dot Z index equals this dot Z index. That way we can really tell if two transforms are the same. So we didn't do that when we did rotation two, which may have caused you some problems, but this should be fixed now and everything should be good. So now that we have Z index inside of the transform, I want to do something else to sort of uh, change things up a little bit. So if we go into our game object class, and we scroll to the top, you'll notice that we have this transform up here. I'm gonna go ahead and mark this as transient. And then I'm also going to take out the Z index because we no longer need to do Z indexing through this. And then that means we can take it out here as well, which means we can also take it out here as well. And I'm going to go ahead and also take out transform from here. And you'll see why in a minute. Basically, transform should be a component. Right now it's not. If we go into here, it does not extend from components, but it should because that is what it is. So I'm going to make sure that this does extend from component and then hit Alt Enter to import this. And then when we go back into game object, what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that the transform is always attached to game objects, right? So if you have a game object, it will always have a transform. Then whenever somebody needs to get a hold of that transform, they can get a hold of it through this reference right here, which will basically just be a direct reference to that component. So how do we make sure that we get this to reference the actual component and everything? Well, we do that in our deserializer. So when we are deserializing objects, instead of going through this and sort of implementing it this way, what we'll do is we'll say create the game object, then we'll just say go.transform uh, at the end of all of our component deserialization equals, and then we're just going to say go.getComponent transform.class. Now, if you have a level already built, this will break things. So we're going to have to go into where you have your level file. So in my case, that's in C, dev, Java, and I'm going to go to Mario YouTube, then delete this level.txt because this will break things a little bit. We're also going to remove these. We no longer have transform and Z index being serialized as part of the game object. And then we're also going to have to go into the game object serializer. I'm forgetting where that is. If we just run, if you hit shift F10, we're going to get a bunch of errors and we can fix all these. So just click on the top one. Okay. First of all, we'll remove this function. We no longer have actually, we can keep, well, yeah, we'll remove the function because it's cleaner if we don't have that. And then we'll go to the next error, which is in render. This is going to say we don't have a Z index. Well, we can just go transform dot Z index now. That should fix that error. And then we'll get the next one, which is same thing, just different lines. So then we'll do the same thing we did, just transform dot Z index instead. 
access that the way it should be accessed. And then, okay, in here, this is a good example of what we want to do. We do want to have a game object like this, but we want it to have a transform. Well, how do we get a transform? I'm going to do something else from the Cherno. So instead of creating game objects manually, what we should do is we should say, hey, uh, whatever the current scene is, I want to create a game object, and this should return us a game object. So inside the scene class, we'll create a function called create game object, which will take in a string, which is just a name, and we'll eventually have this name exposed too. And then inside of here, we'll just say game object, uh, geo equals a new game object, pass it the name, then we'll say geo .add component new transform. So this makes sure that it is built with a transform and we don't have to worry about that. And then we will just say, we want to make sure that we assign that reference now. So we'll say uh, geo.transform equals geo.get component transform.class. This way, when the start method is called, we are make sure that this reference is set. So if anyone uses the direct reference, they have that. And then we'll just return that game object. Then we will go back into where this error is coming from. And instead of doing it this way now, we can remove all this. Well, I'll keep some of it because we're going to actually need this part. So I'm going to copy that and then just delete the rest of it from here, paste it down here. We'll need that in a minute. And then instead of instantiating a new game object directly, we will say window.getScene dot create game object and then we use that name and then we'll just say right down here block dot transform dot scale dot x equals size x because we can see that we were setting the scale right here we can actually remove that too and we'll say block dot transform dot scale dot y equals size y now we have the same functionality and we won't have any sort of weird errors and then if we run this again we'll see we get another error let's see what this is so once again we have sort of the same problem uh, this is Actually, we can just remove this and since we don't want Well, okay, we're gonna give this one a Transform too, even though it probably could deal without one, but we'll give it one anyways So we can just say this equals this dot create game object and then that should get rid of that error Okay, so now we have everything fine. Let's place something in the scene. Okay, cool Everything still works the same and if we move it, it still moves, which means our transform is getting set properly. Okay, so we've basically just refactored a lot. And then let's just make sure that it is still working. If we reload it, we still see the object. Okay, cool. So that's all working good. Now let's actually do the one thing that we were going to do in the beginning, which is if we go into our gizmos, system gizmo.java, and then inside of the start method where we're setting the rotation and everything, we will also say this dot x axis object dot transform dot z index equals and I'll set it to like 100. Technically we could set it to something lower but this will just make sure that it will most likely be in front and we can add in things in the future to make sure that these are absolutely in front. But basically we just say okay set the z index to something really high that way the arrows are always in front of the objects that we place in the scene. So now if we place in an object the arrows are in front of it. Cool that fixes that problem nice. Now we can move on to the properties panel. So how do we make this properties panel actually reflect all the properties uh, nicely? You'll see that it's actually reflecting the transform and the position and scale now, which is good, but it's not really good looking. So we'll make it look good looking. So the first thing we'll do to make this look better is we'll go into our game object class one more time. Um, because first of all, what you'll notice is that if we click on an object, there's like nothing telling us what these variables are part of. So like rotation is clearly a part of transform. But how do we know that since it's right next to the sprite renders color picker? You know, we can't tell. So we'll add the headers, which are basically just uh, the tabs to open up into a specific component. So to do that, we can just go down here and then we'll say as we're iterating through the components, we will just go if I am GUI dot and then we can say collapsing header with a label and the label will just be C dot get class dot get simple name. So we will just give it whatever the class is. So that means that if your component is called font render, it will just get that and use it as the name. And this will basically make it look a little bit nicer. So basically, if we click onto this now, you'll notice that it says sprite render transform, right? And we have these little collapsible things that we can open and close. Cool. So that's part one done. Now part two is making these go on the left, all the labels, and then making these look nicer. So we can do that by creating some custom I am GUI tools and I am going to go ahead and say, let's go to the editor package, create a new class in here and call this J I am GUI. And I'm prefixing it with a J to basically 
notate that this is our extension. This is not I am GUI, this is our extension, which J is for Jade, which I'm gonna have to change the name of that because it turns out there's another Jade engine out there. Anyways, this is basically where we're gonna place a bunch of static functions that do some extra stuff for us. And if you have seen the Chernos video, which I did mention is where I'm getting my inspiration from, then what you're about to see should look very familiar. It will be slightly different though. So we're gonna make a public static void draw vec to control. And this will take in a string label, a vector 2f. This is gonna be the value, values with a s, and then float reset value and float column width. And that's a little bit long, but I'm gonna leave it as is. Then we're gonna go ahead and copy this because Java does not have default variables and we want to make sure that we can overload this. So we'll copy that once and then twice and we will just remove two of these. This way you can call it using any of these. We sort of did the same thing in a side of our debug drawing API. This will just call drawback to control uh, label value and then it will use values and for reset value we'll use 0.0, .0 off by default and I think I have this as 220 by default. And we'll actually go up here and just say private static float default column width equals 220.0f, copy that, just paste it over this. Okay, and then we will copy this, paste it here, except instead of doing this, we'll say use the reset value that they pass in. So basically this calls this, and this also calls this, and they just provide some default values. It's basically the same thing as if we were to say this equals 0.0f and like JavaScript, but we don't have that in Java. So how do we want to draw a vector to control? Well, uh, we're going to be basically doing the same thing as Cherno, which he's doing the same thing as Unreal. So basically, instead of drawing it like this, we're going to have a button in front of this that says X, and then we're going to have a button in front of this that says Y, and we're going to have position the label on the left. Uh, the way we can code this is, first of all, we're gonna, just going to say I am GUI.push ID, and then we're just going to push the label. This will just make sure, and then we're going to say pop ID because we'll have to do that at the end. This will make sure that we don't get any like tool controls conflicting with each other because they have the same labels. So it's basically just I am GUI's way of a namespace or a class name. Then we're gonna say I am GUI.columns2. This will give us two columns that we can use. So one for the label and one for the vector control. And then we're gonna say I am GUI.set column width zero column width so that will give it the initial width and then we'll say i'm gui dot text label i am gui dot next column so what this will do is it'll basically just do whatever label we pass in and then it will create a new column so the best way to see this in action is to just do it real quick so i'm going to go into our transform class uh so transform and then override the i'm gui function so that we can see this so we'll just say right here at override public void I'm GUI and then I'm just gonna say J I'm GUI dot drawback to control label position and then I'm gonna give it the this dot position okay so now we can sort of see what's happening if we run this again I click on this click on a transform okay so you see that we get this position and then we get this thing which basically moves around and then we get this on the same line, what is happening here? Well, if we go back into here, we're basically saying, hey, we have two columns and then we put the label, which is what we passed in, right? We passed in right here, position, and then it goes ahead to the next column. And so if I was to say, I am GUI.next column again, and then we actually say, I am GUI.columns1, this will basically reset the columns at the end, then everything should look completely normal. So if we go back in and I click this, Okay, so you see we have a column here. We have a little divider that's kind of hard to see, but you can move that around and then we've got position and then this is the next column and then we got our next thing. Okay, cool. So now that we have the column in, let's draw the X control, right? So we just want to draw a button that says X and then we want to draw like a drag float control. So to do that, we can do this thing, which is basically how I am GUI does it and how Cherno did it, except we have to do a little differently in Java. So first of all, I'm going to say push style var, I'm GUI style var dot item spacing, and we're just going to set this to zero zero. Then I'm going to say float line height. So we get the line height equals I'm GUI dot get font size plus I'm GUI dot get style dot frame padding y times 2.0. 
Oh, and this should be get font size, not get font. Then I'm gonna go down here and I'm gonna say vector 2f button size. So this is gonna be like the X button is a new vector 2f line height plus three line height. So we basically just create a vector two with the buttons size that we would like to be. Make sure that's a float. And then we're gonna say float with each equals I am GUI dot calc item width minus button size dot x times two over two. What the heck is happening here? Well, basically what I'm doing is we have some space left, right? So what I'm doing is I want to have two controls. Okay, well, this isn't gonna work right now. We have two controls that we wanna place, right? We have something like position and we have a bar and then we have some white space. We want to place two controls here. How why do each of those controls have to be? Well, we have to calculate, first of all, how much space is here. So we calculate the item width minus button size dot X. So how big are each of these buttons? times two because we have two of those buttons. So we're gonna have like a button here, then we're gonna have a drag control here, then we're gonna have a button, drag control. So we subtract out, we don't have this space left, that way we can get how big each of these are, so we just divide by two. That's all we're doing. So that basically just gives us the width for each of those. And since we push the style bar here too, we also want to make sure that at the end we pop that style bar because that is what was causing the problem. I'll do it before we do columns one, two. Okay. So now we have the width for each of these items, how big it's supposed to be. Then we're gonna say push item width and then width each. Then we will say I'm GUI dot push style color. Well, we'll wait on the style colors in just a minute. First of all, we'll just say if I am GUI dot button X. So we're just gonna make this an X button and then we're gonna say button size dot X button size dot Y. So if this is pressed and then we'll say values dot X equals reset value. So basically if you click this button, it resets the value. Let's see what this looks like. So if we click onto this, then we click transform. There we go, we've got an X button. If we click that, it resets its value to zero. So now we want the little drag control thing where you can drag a float. So we will do that now. We'll say I'm GUI dot same line because we want this all to be on the same line. Then we have to say float uh, vec values X equals values dot X. And we'll say I'm GUI dot drag float. So we'll just do a drag float and hashtag hashtag X make sure that we don't get a label, but we do get a unique identifier. And then we'll just say vec values X and 0.1 for the speed. You could change that if you want. Then we'll say I'm GUI pop item width and I am GUI dot same line so that we can place the next thing on the same line too. I'm gonna to comment this out real quick so that we can see what this looks like. Now, if we go into here and we click transform, we have this drag float, which would be modifying the position but it's not right now, we'll fix that in a minute. Okay, now we want the Y control. So the Y control is basically gonna be the same thing, except we just want it to say Y. So we'll copy all that, then we'll change this to Y. We will change this, that should be fine. We will change this to Y. And then we will change this to VEC values Y and change this to Y and change this to VEC values Y. Okay, and change this to Y. Okay, so that should be it. Then at the end of the function, we just want to make sure that we actually set the values to uh, whatever they changed it to. So down here, I'm just going to say values dot X equals vec values X zero values dot Y equals vec values Y zero. Okay, so now we should have both of these controls and they should work fine. So if I click on here, we've got this and we can move it and we've got this and we can move it. And if we hit Y, it resets it to zero, resets it to zero. Cool. Now let's just give these a color. We just want to color this button red and color this button blue. And that is simple enough too. So if we go to right before we actually do the button, which is right here, we just want to make sure that we push some style colors. Uh, in I am GUI, the way you do that is you just say push style color. And we're going to do I am GUI color dot button. And then we just do RGBA. So if you hit control P, just RGBA. So I'm going to do 0 0.2, 0 0.7, and pointo. And these are once again, the Cherno picked these colors. I did not pick these colors. So you can set them to whatever you want if you want them to be something different. Then I'm gonna say this is button hovered and I'm gonna say this is button active. And for button hovered, we will just make this 0 0.3, 0 0.8 and 0.3. And this is wrong, this is green. This should be red. Yeah, so disregard that, this should be red and then the next one should be green. So actually let's just copy this and paste it down here. And then right after we do the F statement, we'll say I am GUI dot pop style color. 
three. Then up here, we will just make sure that this is red and we want to go I'm going to pop style color three. So we pop the colors that we just pushed and we will change this to be 0 0.8, 0 0.1, 0 0.15. And then I'm going to go ahead and just copy that, paste it over here and then paste it over here. And then for this, we'll just go 0 0.9, 0 0.2 and change this to 0 0.2. Okay, so now we should get some colors to our buttons. And if we go back in, and sure enough, we get an, a red and a green, which is matching the gizmos. Cool. So we have gizmos and we have the positions. And now if we go ahead and go into our transform class, remove this so that it just uses the default I'm GUI functions. Then if we go in, we should notice that it has all of our variables exposed, except it's not using the new function we just did. So how do we make it use that function? Well, we just go into component, uh, component right here. And inside of our giant I am GUI catch all function, we'll just go down to vector 2f. And instead of doing this, we will say uh, j I am GUI dot draw vec2 control and we'll just use whatever this is. Uh, and label is going to be position or no, not position. Label is going to be the name. So we'll just say name and then the value is going to be just the value. Okay. And then if we go, we should see that this is now working properly. If we click into here, Cool, we've got position, we've got scale. Now we need to fix rotation and z-index, which are drag float and drag int respectively. So let's just go into our JIM GUI class, and then we will go ahead and just copy this function. We're definitely not gonna use the whole thing for drag float and drag int. So we'll go down here, we'll copy it, and then we'll call this, uh, we'll call this drag float. Then this will take in a label, and it will take in a float value, and because there's no easy way to sort of like take in a float by reference, we will just return a float as well from this. So we'll keep up to here. Then we're just going to go ahead and delete all of this. So that basically we're just left with push ID, two columns, and then pop style bar, which we don't actually need. We just want the columns one and the pop ID. And then right here, we'll say float and we'll create a value array because this is the only way to pass something by reference in Java. And then we will just say I'm GUI dot drag float and we'll say hashtag hashtag drag float. And then we'll pass in the value array and we'll say 0 0.1 for the speed once again. And then down at the bottom here, we'll just say return the value array zero. That way we sort of do this whole thing by reference. And then we're just gonna set this to the default column width. Okay, cool. So this should work for drag float. Now let's copy this once again, make another one for drag int, which is basically the same exact thing, except we take in an integer, we return an integer, we call I am GUI's drag int, and we take in an int array. There we go. So that should be it. And then if we go back into our component class, and we fix up float, which is right here. So instead of doing this, we will say up here, we'll say field dot set. And then we want to set this, whatever object we're currently operating on in here. And then we want to set it to J I am GUI dot drag float. And we will just pass in the label, which is the name and the value, which is val. Okay, copy that. We'll do the same thing for integer. So we can remove all of that. And this is a drag int and we should be good now. So if we run this, we should see that everything looks a little bit nicer. So if we go into here, cool. So we got position, scale, rotation, Z index. This is all automatically exposed for us. And then we got this sprite render thing and this stuff. Uh, for the sprite render, I am going to change this up a little bit too because I don't really like this giant color picker thing that we've got. So. Let's go into JM GUI and we'll create another function. I'm just going to copy this again. And we're going to call this color picker four. So it takes in a vector four and I'm just take vector four F. And this one is actually going to return a Boolean to which technically with the drag uh, vectors, it probably should return a Boolean to. Um, and you can add that if you want. You'll see how to once we do this. So we're basically going to say boolean res equals false. So the result is false. And then 
We'll go down here and we just basically say set the column width and then we create an I am color. So I'm gonna say float I am color equals, and I'm actually gonna do it this way, color equals, and then we'll say color.x, color.y, color.z, color.w. And then we will go into here and we'll say if I am gooey.color edit for, we're just gonna call this color picker, then, and we want to pass in the I am color array, and then we'll say color.set, I am color zero, I am color one, I am color two, and I am color three. Then we'll just return, or we'll say res equals true. And then at the bottom here, we will return that result. And that should be good. So now we have a color picker that we can use. So if we go into our sprite render, uh, you'll notice too that I was using basically the exact same thing that we have in here. So this is basically what I was referencing. And then instead of doing this, we'll just say um, if, instead of if j all this, we'll say if j i am gooey dot color picker for, and then we'll say color picker, and I actually have to fix something in there too, I notice. And then we'll say this dot color. And then we'll just set this dot is dirty to true. So you'll notice this makes our functions a lot simpler too. And then let's go back into j i am gooey because I did mess this up. This should not say color picker, this should say label. So we give it label, and then we do all that stuff. And actually, I'm not even gonna do that. I'm gonna say hashtag, hashtag color picker because we have the label right here. Okay, so then if we go ahead and we run this again, we should notice that everything looks a little bit nicer. So yep, we got the color picker. Transform looks good too. Now, if we go into level editor stuff, you'll notice that it has all the different things we have in here, which is really cool. But you'll also notice if I can find one. Yeah, I can't find one, but Clearly, we need to fix up some other things like booleans. This doesn't really look right. Oh, that's really cool too. But basically, uh, we need to fix up the styling on a few of these other things, but it's very much the same as what we just did. So I'm gonna push the code. You can take a look at the code if you want, but it's basically gonna be the same exact thing. Uh, one other thing I do think we should fix is this scaling. So if we do scale, it resets it to zero. That's not good. Uh, that should reset it to 32, ideally one, but We'll talk about that at a later date too. So to fix that, we can really just fix that really easy by going to transform. And then we'll override I am GUI and then do this ourselves. So we'll just say public override uh, public void I am GUI. And then we'll just say J I am GUI dot draw vec to control. We wanna say transform or actually position. This is this dot position. And we'll say J I am GUI dot draw vec to control. Uh, this is gonna be scale this.scale, and then we'll say reset value is 32. So it resets it to 32 instead. Then we want to do a drag float for our rotation. We'll say this.rotation, and then we'll say j i am gooey.drag int for our z index, and we'll just say z index here, this.z index. Okay, so if we do it manually, that should fix that up. And then if we go ahead and click onto this again, if we change the scale, then we hit the reset button, it resets it to a nice even number that we would expect. We'll fix this type of stuff up to later because I don't think it should reset to 32. And we'll talk about that stuff in a little bit in the future. But yeah, so that is it for the properties panel. We now have a properties panel that is working a lot better and you'll notice that it automatically exposes everything. Like these things, we never wrote any code for this. It just figured out how to do this because of some stuff we've had in place earlier, which is really cool. Um, I'll push the code up. You guys check it out and see how it works so that you can implement the rest of the styles. In the next episode, we're either going to be working on like a tree, a scene hierarchy tree, uh, so that we can click on objects over here too and do that type of stuff. Or we'll be working on getting this scale so that one makes it look like it's 32 and the camera's just basically zoomed in way further. We'll, we'll talk about that in the next episode. So we'll see which one we do. Anyways, that is it for this tutorial. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please hit like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Thanks.